So what is life for you? Is it a dream? Is it <laughs> is life a real? Dream? Is it a million D? What is life for Elon Musk? I find as, as I get older, I find that question to be maybe more and more confusing or troubling or uncertain. Um, I think particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games. You know, like say 40 years ago, you had video games. The most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot. You know, like batting it back and forth. I played it. Oh, yeah. Like, me too, exactly. That's I played Pong. <laughs> exactly. It sort of dates you a little bit. But yeah, we, we both played the same game. Um, and that was like, wow, that was a pretty fun game at the time. Um, but now you can see a video game that's uh, photorealistic, almost photorealistic, and millions of people playing simultaneously. And, um, and you see where things are going with virtual reality um, and augmented reality. And if you extrapolate that out into the future with any rate of progress at all, like even 0.1% uh, or something like that uh, a year, then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. Um, and then it seems like, well, how do we know that that didn't happen in the past and that we're not in one of those games ourselves? Interesting. Interesting. I mean, could be. <laughs> Everything is possible in life. There's a... Um sort of a philosophic concept that a sufficiently advanced civilization will be able to create uh, a simulation. simulation. Yeah, maybe you've answered this before? A simulation. I've had so many simulation discussions, it's crazy. Okay, um, so, because... In fact, it, it got to the point where basically every conversation was, was the AI, AI slash simulation conversation. Um, and my brother and I finally agreed that um, we would ban such conversations if we were ever in a hot tub. Okay. That was like... <laughs> Because you know, that really well, kills the magic. Tub, um, so, so, so the idea is right. Any sufficiently advanced civilization would create, could create a simulation that's like our existence, and so the theory follows that may, maybe we're in the simulation. Have you thought about this? And a lot. Are we? <laughs> are we? Even I, in hot tub. No. So are much so it had to be banned from a hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's not the sexiest conversation. Are we in? Are we in? Um, yeah. the, 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 I, mean, I think here's, in my mind, like the, the, the strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Um, that that 40, call it 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. Mm -hmm. And soon we'll have virtu you know, vir virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Just in indistinguishable. Mm -hmm. um, e even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, um, then you just say, okay, well, well let's imagine it's a 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. Um, so, um, so, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be you know, billions of such uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. So Tell me what's wrong with that argument. Is the answer yes? <laughs> the argument is probably, I mean, I just like, is there, is there a flaw in that argument? I mean, someone, but someone. I'm not that, sure what but, the error. In, uh, no, no, the argument makes sense. So the assumption then is that somebody beat us to it, and this is a game. No, no, there's a one in billions chance that this is base reality. Oh, okay. What do you think? Well, I think it's one in billions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, this, this, that seems to be like clearly what the, you know, what, the, what, it, what it suggests. Right. And, and actually, I mean, arguably we should hope that that's true 
because otherwise, if, if civilization stops advancing, then that may be due to some calamitous event that erases civilization. So maybe we should be hopeful that this is a simulation because otherwise... Because they could reboot it. Well, otherwise, e either we're going to create simulations that are indistingu indistinguishable from reality or civilization will cease to exist. Those are the two options. It's something that I think is, is going to be quite important. Um, and and, and it's, there's not, I don't know of a company that's working on it seriously is, um, is a neural lace. Um, so okay, going, going back to the AI situation, um, like this is quite an important, uh, quite an important debate. Like the, if you assume any rate of advancement in AI, um, we will be left behind by a lot. Um, and so then we could be in, you know, benign situation, but the, even the benign situation, if you have some, you know, if you have ultra-intelligent AI, um, we would be, you know, so, so far below them in intelligence that it would be, would be like, you know, a pet, basically. Pet, that's what I was thinking. Like a pet. Cat, like a cat, cat. Like a cat. Elon it'd be like a house cat. cat. Yeah, right. it would be like the house cat. Right. Um, and, um, yeah, it's not, that's, it's not the end of the world, you know. It's just, you know well. Sort of pet. You've seen the movie. It could be. Yeah. It could be. It could be. Um, the you know, so that but that honestly that that would that would be the benign scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and so house cat is okay. I mean, I don't love the idea of being a house cat. Okay. Um, <laughs> but but that, so what's the solution? Yeah. So I think the um, I, I think I think it I think it's to essentially I think one of the solutions. The solution that, that seems maybe the best one is to have an AI layer. Um, if you think of like you've got your limbic system, um, your cortex, and then um, a digital layer, a sort of a third layer above the cortex, um, that um, could work work well and symbiotically with with you. I mean, just as your cortex works symbi symbiotically with your limbic system. Your did, sort of a third digital layer could work symbiotically with the rest. This of is something that's in, in surgically inserted or bred so, into the species, or what? The, the fundamental limitation is input output. So uh, we, we already have uh, we, we're already a cyborg. Um, it's just that I mean you have a digital version of yourself or, or partial version of yourself online in the form of your emails and your social media and all the things that you do. Um, and, and you have basically superpowers in, in that with your computer and your phone and, and the applications that are there. Um, you have more power than the President of the United States had 20 years ago. So you can answer any question. Uh, you can video conference with anyone um, right. anywhere. You can send a message to millions of people instantly. Um, you know, you just do incredible things, and um, but the constraint is is input out output. So we're we're I/O bound, um, particularly output bound. I mean, like the your output level is so low. It's like particularly on a phone, like your two thumbs are sort of tapping away. Um, this is ridiculously slow. Um, our input is much better because we have a high bandwidth visual interface to the brain. Like our, our eyes take in a lot of, da lot of data. Um, so there's many orders of magnitude difference between um, input and output. Um, so mostly um, effectively merging in a symbiotic way with uh, digital intelligence revolves around eliminating the I.O. constraint. Um, so it would be some sort of direct cortical interface. Um, and you called it a neural lace? Neur neural lace, yeah. Um, it's totally not Google Glass, right? No. I, I'm talking about no, something but it's which... Like you wear it? Or you... No. I mean, it would be... Uh, I, mean, it, I mean, there are a few ways to approach this, but some sort of interface directly with your cortical neurons, particularly. But doesn't that imply uh, surgical insertion? Not or? necessarily. You could go through the veins and arteries because that, that provides a, a complete uh, roadway to 
um, all of your neurons. Your neurons are very heavy users of energy, so they need high blood flow. So you automatically, with your veins and arteries, have um, a road network to your neurons. Still sur some kind of surgery, right? Um, yes, but it, you could insert something, you know, basically, you know, in, 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 into the jugular and, and have, <laughs> it gets macabre, but... It sounds I mean, really easy and... It, it doesn't involve, pop, it, doesn't, it doesn't involve, you know, like chopping your, your, your skull off or anything like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah.